27 verses 32. So I, I read it. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. So today I'm going to talk about uh, Simon and the soldier and the cross in Jesus. So uh, before we start to look into the short story about Simon, so let's understand a bit about what is migrant and evangelism. So migrant, the definition of the migrant in Cambridge Dictionary is a person that travels to a different country or a place, often in order to find work. So what, what is the uh, end? The meaning of the evangelism is the preaching of the gospel with the intention of exposing God's love to all mankind through Jesus Christ. And when we talk about uh, evangelism, the person who do the evangelism is often known as evangelist. So uh, evangelist, the definition is a person who tries to persuade people to become Christians often by traveling around and organizing religious meetings. So both of these references <coughs> mention an important word, traveling. So we often think that uh, foreign workers or refugees, they are migrants. But maybe we can include some other expressions to the word migrants. The context of teacher or situations that migrant might have are similar to the people who move internally, like moving from rural area to a city for a job or a better employment, or relocate to work in different ethnic groups, cultures, thoughts, and languages. So let's now make some observ observation on this short story. So today I'm uh, let us first to talk uh, to discuss about soldier and Simon. So soldier and Simon is the relationship is like a employer and employee. So I have two questions. The first one, why does the soldier choose Simon? And the second one is what is the characteristic of Simon? So we can see that Simon is a man with good health and physically strong. And some sources say that he's not a local person. So he came uh, suddenly or incidentally to meet the soldier and Jesus. So what the soldier did can be seen as what the human market is. Request uh, in the sense that uh, they can easily demand the foreigners to do this kind of um, privileged and uh, uh, despised work. So this kind of discrimi discrimination has some similarities with how some employers today are treating their employees. So I still remember that there is one time I chat with my colleague. Uh, she is also for foreign workers, and we talk about the migrant issues. So she shared with me that if it is possible to get a nice job in her home country, she'd rather choose to go back and work in her home country. But the reality is that to get a job in her home country is very difficult. And the salary is paid badly. So although the salary isn't paid fairly in many countries, she has no choice but to leave her home to look for a decent job in overseas. So can we say that uh, we shouldn't welcome the foreign workers into our communities? Or can we say that if they don't like to work here, why don't they go back to and work in their countries? So in Taiwan, um, Nowadays, the elderly care policy is a hot issue in legislative yuan recently. So due to the low birth rate and improvement, improvement of medical care, the average age of the total population is getting higher and higher. 
So to take um, China, China is the most population country. To take China as an example, China has the highest population in the world in the last 20th century. But Chinese government told them uh, held the one child policy in order to control the birth child birth rate. But the consequence of the one child policy reflects some serious problem in these years. Uh, the child became an adult and he or she faced the issue that he or she need to take care of he or her parents and grandparents by her own, by his own. So in 2015, there are more than 220 million elderly people in China. So more and more elderly people depend on the elderly caring system to support their needs. This is just one of the reasons that people work overseas is an inevitable condition. So we may notice that sometimes the labor policy is unreasonable and even cruel. So they will only request for workers under 40 years old. But if we need a worker who are experienced, or the age restriction shouldn't be a hindrance to a more professional worker for the work. So even in some countries, the people who live in HIV plus, they are not allowed to get the work permit. So I'm not going to say that any person is suitable for any job, but we should discern and question whether the labor policy is for qualification or is it a discrimination or exclusion. So I want to raise that moment a bit. As a Christian, we shouldn't say that people shouldn't leave their home to work. Whether we are the migrant workers or we are the receiving country, I believe it is a good opportunity to do act of evangelism and welcome all experience, God's <coughs> love and justice. So now talk about the bless and participation. Simon is the one who had the opportunity to participate in Jesus' journey to his work of redemption. <coughs> so when Jesus carried a cross on the way to uh, Golgotha, Simon was the person that perhaps he didn't expect to ever dream to touch the cross for a criminal like Jesus because carrying the cross, <coughs> sorry, uh, maybe he was afraid and shocked when he was commanded to carry a cross for a criminal like Jesus because Christ carrying the cross is a symbol of death. But Jesus sacrificed himself and brought hope to all creation. So carrying the, carrying the cross, it becomes a blessing and privilege, especially for and with the people whom the society condemn and sidelines. So when I look back to my childhood experience, I realized that I was so afraid about things like death, health, or Saturn. So much so that uh, sometimes I couldn't sleep if I turned off the light. Uh, the understanding of these words are abstract, based on what we taught in the Sunday school. But when I start to learn to protest, against many social issues in college since the last 10 years, yeah, long time ago. Uh, more and more, I feel that I'm not just physically closer to death, but also close to the death of hope. I still remember that uh, when I was in Kaohsiung on 20th of March of 20, uh, 2014, I heard the news about the cross-trade service trade agreement. I think some of you know, know this movement. It was passed in a valid way, and many students and civil societies, they gathered in the legislative room to protest, 
to protest against the unjustice process in processing the agreement. So in that time, I told my father that I have a friend who was going to drive to Taipei at 11 p.m. because it, uh, that time, uh, this movement uh, it happens very late. So I said, okay, I can go 11 p.m. So I want to take this chance to travel with him so that I can discuss a new design job, design project with my church friend in Taipei face to face. My father said yes without hesitation. So I thought, okay, my father was not aware of this issue and was comfortable for my trip. When I finished packing and ready to leave, he said to me that I knew where you are going. I knew that I can stop you to do something you are willing to do, and you are an adult, so I trust that you can make your own decision. But I remember to, but you need to remember and take a good care of yourself. So in that time, I was so touched by my father's words of encouragement because I knew that in Chinese government had told church in Taiwan, the Taiwanese and did a lot of despicable things when my father was young. So it was truly a hopeless situation that he had encountered. encountered. But he chose not to influence my decision and had hoped that I can join the movement and make, this, make some change. I revealed those days I stayed in the legislative year. The experience of the tremendous fears never go away from my mind and my heart. So why I share these stories with you? Because the young people, the main working population in the labor system, they are facing hopeless situation in their country. So the first day we had our welcome dinner in refugees' kitchen. Yesterday we visited the Bethany House and Christian Action to hear the story from our dear sisters. So this injustice it didn't just happen recently. It accumulated over years and bring about hopelessness since the day, the day they were born in this world. So early this year in March, East Asia region had a members mission forum. We asked the participants a question. So what would fullness of life through Christ for all creation look like if we were to accomplish our goal? So there are some, they, come, they came up some nice ideas like uh, no conflict and crime, lovely environment, diversity in unity. But there is an answer really catch my eye is heaven on earth. So just early this month, the member church celebrate, um, the member churches celebrate 40, uh, 40 years anniversary in Singapore. The start thing is healing the broken body, hope for renewal. So it reminds me that we cannot go to the heaven without the living hope in Christ. In a story today, Simon helped Jesus to cross, to carry the cross to Golgotha. So it's a journey to encourage us as a Christian to carry out, to carry our own cross, a self-denying journey and, and walk with hope in Jesus Christ. The journey of the cross is indeed a journey of hope in action. So there is a character in the movie Silence called uh, Kichijiro. Okay, Kichijiro. He is a Japanese Christian. Oh, it's too dark, so you cannot see there is a person here. So he is a Japanese Christian. So he once asked a father his father, the, the Catholic father, not, not his father. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like you. Sorry, I can't. Okay. 
So he asked his father, I'd like you nowhere to go. So where is the place for weak men in the world like me? So yes, this is a time for us to think about what is the meaning of the evangelism in today's context. So since we know that Jesus' redemption has brought the hope for everyone, and Jesus promised that he will be with us as we participate in his missional journey. So friends, I want to invite you to together put effort and partner with each other in making space for heaven on earth. We must, we must provide care for the marginalized, take some responsible action in addressing social issues, and equip ourselves to welcome everyone to join in the community of hospitality, justice, hope, love, and hope. So the Lord prayer said, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So let us learn to reimagine the church to become a more inclusive church and show concern the social issues that are happening around us with the hope that the world can be a better place for everyone to work anywhere, to experience hospitality, love, justice, and hope. And I believe this is the fullness, fullness of life through Christ for all creation. Amen. So let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for giving us the opportunity to learn with, from each other and to give our concern and our thought and our heart to know each other. This is a special time that we gather here. And we have privilege to do something or to think about something. And thank you to taking care of us and let us uh, let us give our heart because we know you are the only hope. And we know uh, we need to fulfill the heaven on earth. So in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Amen.